Hey everybody, I am super excited to have you here with me today to go over this lecture. And this is gonna be the 300 dental anatomy facts that if you know, you're gonna do amazing on this section of the boards. And this resource is what I really wish I had when I was studying the boards. If you go through this and feel confident about all these topics, you're gonna be able to answer so many questions that are gonna come up on the boards. You're gonna recognize a lot of stuff from this lecture. So with that, let's get right into it. We're gonna start on primary dentition or our baby teeth. Primary teeth are less mineralized than adult teeth, so they're gonna be more worn out. They don't have as much mineral, they're not as hard, and so they just wear away much faster than adult teeth. And when you are all in clinic and you're treating children, occasionally you may run into a kid who has a grinding problem and you'll always be able to tell because the teeth are just worn almost flat and you'll be able to see that little halo outline of the nerve chamber. And they wear away so flat because they're much less mineralized than adult teeth. And primary teeth are gonna be much whiter, much lighter than adult teeth. They're gonna have much more of a brightness to them. And here we're gonna talk about mammalons. And mammalons are these little bumps that are on the edge of incisors after they recently have been erupted. And through normal wear and tear, and protrusive movements and excursive movements, these mammalons will eventually grind away until the incisal edge is just flat. Now, if somebody still has mammalons on their teeth beyond the age of 10, it can indicate that they have an open bite. And so if they have an open bite, they're just, they're never touching their teeth together. So they're not grinding those mammalons away. The roots on baby teeth are going to be completely calcified by about three to four years old. And the way I think about that is I just remember that that second molar it has erupted by the age of about two to two and a half. So by about two to two and a half, they have all their teeth erupted, but it takes another two years for those roots to fully calcify. So they've completed calcification by about three to four years of age. This one right here, so many of you are gonna see this question on your test, and it's a, just a gimme if you know the order here. So this has to do with the pattern of eruption of baby teeth. So the centrals are first, then we just move back to the laterals. Then we move way back to the first molars. Then we jump forward with the canines and then we jump all the way back to the second molars. This next point is gonna be about the primate space in the upper arch and in the lower arch. So you have to know where it is. The primate space is a large opening between the teeth. And so on the maxillary arch, it's gonna be between the lateral incisor and the canine, as you can see right here, here's the central, there's the lateral, and there's the canine. And so you can see that little gap right there. On the lower arch, it's gonna be between the canine and the first molar. And on baby teeth, you'll notice in general that there's gonna be a lot of spacing on these anterior teeth. So here you can see there's some spacing right here. So the child is still growing, and so is the dental arch. So if two teeth were together at one point, as that arch grows, the teeth move away from themselves and form a space. And so point eight is the primary spacing for the anterior teeth is most frequently caused by the growth of the dental arches. All right, now we're gonna talk about the enamel rods. And so in this picture here, you can see this enamel rod is pointing in a very specific direction. So this question has to do with the direction that these enamel rods face, and they can either face toward the occlusal or they can either face downward toward the root. Now in adult teeth, the rods on the top part of the tooth, they're gonna point upward. And then in the cervical portion of the tooth near the root, they're gonna point down. Now that's different for deciduous teeth. For primary teeth, these enamel rods are pointing towards the occlusal in that cervical area. So that's a pretty common question and it's a hard one to visualize if you haven't really seen it, but these primary teeth are very unique in that their enamel rods are gonna point upward in the cervical third, opposite of what the permanent teeth do. Sometimes you'll have some questions come up about how baby roots are different than adult roots. And so the roots of baby teeth are gonna be much more divergent than adult teeth. And so they're gonna kind of spread apart a little bit more. And then the root trunk isn't as big. So the root trunk is that area from the CEJ up to the furcation. And so you got a small root trunk here. Sometimes it's absent, but the main point here is that the baby tooth 
it has a very small to absent root trunk, whereas the adult teeth have the root trunk and it's very identifiable. These two points are going to be about the mandibular central incisor. The primary mandibular central incisor is going to have the smallest facial lingual crown dimension. So from facial to lingual, it's really tiny and it's going to be the smallest. The permanent and primary mandibular central incisor is the most bilaterally symmetrical tooth. So here we have the mandibular centrals and they basically are saying that you can't tell one from the other. Usually a tooth has a feature which allows you to see if it's like the left canine or the right canine. But with mandibular central incisors, you can't tell which one is left and which one is right. So it's the most bilaterally symmetrical tooth. In cases where the baby incisors have a delayed eruption, the adult incisors are going to erupt lingually to those baby teeth and cause that shark tooth effect. The primary central incisor has a very prominent cervical ridge on the facial and on the lingual. Two common questions here about the baby canine. So from a facial view, the crown of the primary canine has a mesioincisal slope longer than the distoincisal. So here is the mesioincisal slope, and it is longer than the distal slope. And that's going to be because of point 17. So the cusp tip of the primary canine is offset to the distal, and that would make that distoincisal slope shorter. Okay, on to the maxillary first molar. Very common question here. The maxillary first primary molar has a crown that somewhat resembles an adult premolar. So this whole tooth is the maxillary first molar. If you imagine you knock this little corner off right here, then it looks a lot like a premolar. And then the maxillary first primary molar is gonna have roots that resemble a typical permanent maxillary molar. So we have these three roots. We have the palatal root here, and then we have the two buccal roots. And here's a good example of how divergent those baby roots are. The cervical ridge is most prominent for the primary maxillary first molar on the mesiofacial surface. And notice I put pay attention here, and they love to ask about prominent cervical ridges. And remember from earlier, we already learned that the maxillary central incisor has a very prominent and bulbous buccal and lingual cervical ridge. Now here they could ask which maxillary molar has the most prominent cervical ridge. They could also ask where is this cervical ridge most prominently located? You know, like distal to mesial, and it's on the mesiofacial surface of that molar. So if they ask which primary maxillary tooth has the most prominent cervical ridge, it's going to be the maxillary first molar, and that's going to be on the mesiofacial surface. If they ask which primary tooth has the most prominent cervical ridge just in general out of all the teeth, it's not going to be this one, as we'll see later on. And then just a reminder here, on baby teeth, we may have a root trunk that is small or even absent. All right, on to the maxillary second molar. And these three points are basically getting at the same idea, and that is that this baby maxillary second molar looks a lot like the adult first molar on the maxilla. So the baby maxillary second molar, it looks almost exactly like the adult maxillary first molar. So the primary maxillary second molar is the primary tooth that has an oblique ridge. So we got that right here. And we see that on the adult maxillary first molar. Primary second molars are gonna have those oblique ridges. They're also gonna have transverse ridges and a distolingual groove. And the primary second molar generally exhibits a cusp of carabelli. So if you're taking the boards and you see a question about a baby tooth that has these anatomical features of the maxillary first adult molar, then it's always every time going to be the maxillary second molar. The maxillary second molar is going to be the last primary tooth to erupt. And so remember, we go centrals to laterals, and then we jump way far back to the first molars, jump forward to the canines, and then jump all the way back to the second molars. The baby second molar on the maxilla is going to have more cusps than the first molar. And so the first molar, remember, that looks a lot like a premolar, and a premolar has way less cusps than a molar. So the first molar looks like a premolar. The second molar looks like an adult maxillary first molar. So it's naturally going to have more cusps than the first molar. The primary tooth that has the most distinctly prominent facial cervical ridge is going to be the mandibular first molar. So here it is. I mean, boom, look at that thing. 
And then this one is kind of worded really confusingly, which you'll find on the boards a lot. But if you break it down into a picture, it actually will make a lot of sense. From a facial view, so we're looking at from a facial view, the primary mandibular first molars, CEJ, is most apically positioned in the mesial one-third. And so here we've got the CEJ, and it's moving in an apical direction in the mesial one-third, and that's because of that bulbous cervical ridge. So the cervical ridge, the CEJ, is just really dipping down apically in that mesial one-third. So if they ask which primary tooth, just in general, out of all the teeth has the most prominent cervical ridge, it's gonna be the mandibular first molar. So now we're gonna take the mandibular molar and we're gonna look at the occlusal aspect and we're gonna see what type of questions can they ask us about the occlusal aspect. So the primary mandibular molar usually exhibits a distal triangular fossa, so right here. And even though it's in the distal, some they'll call it the central fossa. And sometimes they'll call it the distal fossa, and sometimes they'll call it the main fossa. Okay. So you have to be ready for all those sorts of descriptions on this one. And then the primary molar has the most distinct transverse ridge. This is a very common question that many of you will get. The primary first molar does not look like any other permanent tooth. And then this is just another way to say the same thing. The primary tooth that differs most from the permanent tooth is the mandibular first molar. Remember the maxillary first molar looks most like a premolar and then the maxillary baby second molar looks almost identical to an adult maxillary first molar. Now this one is a little bit tricky here. So you have to be very careful in how you read this question. So you'll get it asked in one of two ways and the answer is different depending on how they ask it. So the highest and sharpest cusp of the primary mandibular first molar is the mesiolingual not the mesiobuccal. So here we've got the mesiolingual. It's going to be the tallest. Sometimes it'll be described as the highest. Sometimes it'll be described as the sharpest. And if you see a question asking about the highest, tallest, or sharpest cusp on a mandibular first molar, it's always going to be the mesiolingual. But if they ask about the largest cusp, then it's going to be the mesiobuccal. So there's a difference in large and length. One is asking about size, one is asking about height. And remember, we have this really prominent cervical ridge, and that's going to make this buccal cusp take up two-thirds of that buccal surface. So when you're looking from the buccal, you can see how huge this buccal cusp is. But when we flip the tooth over and view it from the lingual angle, that mesiolingual cusp is going to be the tallest, highest, and sharpest. Now this one it should probably be in my miscellaneous section. But we'll go over it here anyway, it snuck in here. So the primary function of the dental pulp is to form dentin. And then the difference in arch space for the adult teeth versus the primary teeth is gonna range between two to six millimeters. So the arch length of an adult's maxilla is gonna be 128 millimeters. So it's longer than the mandible by two millimeters. So that's a difference of two millimeters. That's where this number comes from. And then the primary arch length of the maxilla is gonna be 68.2 compared to 61.8, and that's about a difference of six millimeters. So again, the difference in arch space for adults versus children is gonna range between two to six millimeters. That's it for this one, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. I wish you the best of luck in your studies. Keep at it. I know it's hard, but these videos are gonna make it way easier for you to study. So keep at it, and let's move on to the next video.